Hey there, gonna make a video that I should have made a long time ago. Um, so here I'm gonna share with you um, something that I've modified and, uh, and I did this way back in 2020 during COVID. So um, during COVID times, I wanted to get a hot tub and hot tubs were hard to come by. So I found this uh, Watkins hot springs um hot springs tub on craigslist for for free and of course you had to pick it up and haul it off so so i took a look at it and it looked really promising although it was really dingy and dirty like most hot tubs that people are trying to throw away so um so anyway it generally looks better than this but it's been out in the yard operating for four years i'm cleaning the water i'm going to empty it um the covers disintegrated so this is just the foam panels um but i'm just uh gonna show you what i did to um basically rejuvenate this hot tub uh and that you should be able to do as well if you find a like a high quality tub like this one that's made by hotkin watkins and uh, it's very easy when they look dingy to get discouraged, but you can just take a magic eraser and you can clean this plastic, um, I guess like a PVC uh, plastic, and you can just polish it with a, with a magic eraser and it'll just be white and, and bright and, and it'll look great. So, so what I did was um, in California, I wanted to conserve energy because energy prices are high. Um, so, um, first I'll show you the mechanicals. So, um, so we got the mechanicals here and, um, I've got the cover off. This is the original control box, but what I did was I gutted the control box that, uh, the hot springs had in it. Uh, I bought replacement relays, um, for controlling the heat and the main pump same relays fit in the same spot but i got one of these sewn off four output um controllers um over wi-fi and you use the sewn offs app on your phone and so you can control those four circuits so i've got here like circuit number one is for the recirculation pump for the heat which is running all the time circuit number two is for the heater Circuit number three is for the jet pump, and circuit four is for the lights. Um, I've got a cover. The cover goes back on this. I've 3D printed these little clips um, because I don't know the. There were standoffs that were broke off um, for screws originally, so I just 3D printed some clips that just snap on and and keep the cover on. Moving on. We've got some, I replumb this. So in the replumbing, I need, you need two pumps. You need the main jet pump back here and you need a circulation pump for the heat. So what I've done is I've gotten this pump that's for large aquariums off of Amazon. It's made by Jabao and it's called the DCP 5000. And it's a high efficiency variable speed brushless water pump and here's the controller for it up here so you can adjust uh, the output speed and it tells you how much power it's using so I usually run it it's like at hundred percent right now I usually turn it down to like 75 or 80 percent um, once the tubs up to temperature um, so I'll put it at like 80 percent and then you'll see that the wattage drops down as the pump slows down so saves energy compared to like the 60 watt you know cheap induction pump that they were running from the factory you know this thing runs at 28 watts it says right now and it's been running for four years continuously so that's my uh brushless circulation pump okay so there's the hot tub up here and the reason why i'm standing a little bit farther away is that um, here is how I heat the water so in a typical hot tub you would have a resistive heating element 
And that resistive heating element may consume up to seven kilowatts of energy to heat your water. But in California, energy is expensive and I have solar panels on my house. And so I wanna make the best use of that energy. So in gutting the system, I decided I was gonna use a heat pump. So what I've done is I've routed the line from the circulation pump under this wrap into this ray pack unit. And this is designed for heating pools, small pools, because this is the smallest unit that they sell. You know, and it looks just like a mini split, but it has a, a water heat exchanger inside made out of titanium. So it's not messed up by pool chemicals. So the water comes into the heat exchanger inside here. Um, heat is introduced into the water supply and it returns back. And that's all from that um, Jabao water pump that just circulates the water in the pump. So I've cranked up the, the output temperature set point. And so now you can see it's running at 100% output. It's very silent. Um, just like you would expect from air conditioner, there's cold, cool air coming out of here. Um, it's a 80 degree day, so there's plenty of heat in the air to heat this water. My wife likes it at 102. I like it around 100, but this thing can max out at 104, which is plenty hot for, I think, anyone's hot tub. Um, and so, yeah, it's running right now. It's heating the water. And the amazing thing is that you can read the, the label. Sorry, this has been out for four years now running but this thing only uses 1.6 kilowatts of electricity when it's running at 100 percent it is variable speed there's a display here but it's so bright today that you can't see it in the daylight at 100 percent this consumes 1.6 kilowatts but it does produce the equivalent of seven kilowatts of heat uh, i know that because I've measured the temperature of rise of the hot tub based on the gallons of water, approximately 500 gallons. You can look it up on Watkins website and uh, measure the time it takes. And then you can calculate online what kind of energy it would take. And so I'm getting equivalent of seven kilowatts of heat while only consuming 1.6 kilowatts of energy. And um, compared to, you know, a normal resistive heater, which just absolute uses seven kilowatts. So, it's amazing, it runs year round, keeps the hot tub hot. Um, when it runs, you just don't even hear it because it's only a few feet um, behind and I've dropped it down below this retaining wall. Um, but it is behind like these hedges and stuff. Um, but most of the time, it doesn't need to run uh, very strong at all. You know, it can run at 50% if it only needs to boost the temperature but, or hold it steady. So overall, with the Watkins Hot Spring um, Hot Tub project that I um, that I built four years ago, and it's been running ever since, um, I guess to summarize, I'd say, you know, the cost of this project is free hot tub. I think I had to pay some very strong guys four hundred dollars to move it across town. They had to um, bring it down these stairs into my backyard and set it down and level it. Um, I, uh, for the mechanicals, I um, spent approximately 400 for uh, a new pump. For the jet pump, I spent 80 bucks for the, the brushless circulation motor. Um, I actually 3D printed a bunch of fittings um, for the tub to um, interconnect everything. Um, maybe a hundred dollars, $150 to make a custom control system using the Sunoff um, four output pro controller. So now I can operate it from my phone. Um, I don't use the integrated panel with that Sunoff controller. You can schedule on off times, you know, for all the four circuits, uh, or you can schedule like, you can program like a timer. So when you activate the pump, it'll run for 30 minutes and then it'll auto shut off and then you can reset it again so you don't have to think about it. Um, so that's been in there and operating just fine. Um, you know, some PVC pipe. And then um, the main um, cost is the ray pack, which uh, isn't very expensive. You can look them up online. 
Um, I bought mine four years ago. Maybe the price has gone up somewhat. But um, yeah, the system's been flawless, been operating, uh, like I said, all through winter. Um, it's never had a problem. Of course, I live in San Jose Bay Area, so we don't have frigid cold temperatures, but um, it's never had a problem keeping the water at uh, 102 or even hotter. Um, and uh, um, there you go. Uh, another hack from BoilerBots. Thanks for watching.